In this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate demi-permanent dye application. The process that I will demonstrate is also okay for semi-permanent and first-time permanent application, but please note this method is not to be used for permanent dye root touch-up. There are four things you need to consider before deciding to alter the color of your hair. Number one, porosity. How your hair absorbs and holds moisture will determine how color deposits in your hair. If you have low porosity, it can be more difficult to process dye because the hair shaft is not as receptive to foreign chemicals. This means if you are using a box kit, you may not get the color result as you see it on that packaging. If you have high porosity, you have to be careful not to over process your hair as chemicals can process almost twice as fast. Number two, texture. Coarse strands generally take more time to absorb color than fine strands. This means that processing times may vary from instructions given in kits. How much you ask? Well, as always, it depends. Number three, your natural hair color. There are levels to this. If you have level one or two, black or very dark brown hair, you will not make it to those light blondes and bright reds without the use of permanent dye, high level developer, and in some cases, bleaching agents. And number four, damage. Depending on the type of dye and how many levels you have to climb up the color chart and how your dye is processed, you may experience differences in curl pattern, elasticity, and overall manageability. This will vary from person to person. A good barometer is to think about your hair's history. If you are prone to excessive shedding, dryness, and breakage without color, expect those issues to get worse with it. There are two ways to alter hair color. Temporary with ammonia-free semi or demi-permanent dye or henna, and then permanent dye, which is an ammonia-based process. When it comes to choosing a hair color system, there are several brands out there that make awesome demi and semi-permanent dyes. Some of my favorites are the Creative Image Adore System, the Matrix Color Sync System, and the Wella Color Charm System. As always, a consultation with the stylist can help you determine the best system and color for your hair. For a little over a year now, I have been using Ion's Demi Permanent Light Burgundy Blonde with Low Level 10 Developer. I chose this dye because it lasts longer than a semi-permanent, but it will eventually wash out over lots of time if I stop touching it up, so I'm not stuck with it. These colors are ammonia-free, and they use Low Level Developer, which means they will not lift or lighten or remove your natural hair color, but it will just slightly open the cuticle, allowing color to deposit on top of my natural pigment. I will also be using two mixing bowls and a pair of vinyl gloves, a wide hair tinting brush, Ion's Color Defense After Color Sealer, Proclaim Petroleum Jelly, Trader Joe's Nourish Spa Shampoo and Conditioner, my Conair Hooded Dryer, and a few butterfly clips. I'm going to begin by sectioning my hair into four quadrants. Now I will mix my dye and developer. You'll need two parts developer to every ounce of color, or in this case, it's four ounces of developer to every two ounce tube of color. I use almost two tubes of color to cover all of my hair. If you have less dense hair, or your hair is a lot shorter, you should be able to get it done with just one. Also, if you are using a color system with liquid dye, you may want to use an applicator bottle that you can easily shake and then distribute the color into your hair. With cream-based colors like this, it's easier to mix it in a bowl. But, as always, make sure you have thoroughly read all of the instructions in the kit or system that you are using before you begin. Before I begin, I'm going to put a little bit of petroleum jelly around my hairline to prevent the dye from staining my skin. Now I'm going to apply the color. I'm going to take a section and take smaller pieces within that section, brush on a little bit of color, and then smooth it with my fingers to ensure that all the strands are completely covered. This is a messy process. 
You probably don't want to wear anything you care about and you should probably cover your floor with newspaper. Before you start, you need to check the timing instructions in the packaging for the system you are using. As you are applying dye, keep track of how long it's taking because you will need to subtract that time from the overall processing time. As you can see, I am applying my dye to stretched hair. Though this is not completely necessary, in my opinion, it just makes the application time go faster and easier. I have a lot of hair to cover and I don't want to waste a lot of time trying to detangle and smooth through. I need to quickly get this color on so that it can process as evenly as possible. Again, this is a demi-permanent process. There is no ammonia to remove my natural color, so it is still in the hair shaft. This dye is only depositing on top of my natural color, which is why I have to recolor the entire section of hair. You want to make sure that if you are going to do any oil-based treatments, such as hot oil treatments, that you do them the week prior to dyeing your hair as oils, especially olive oil, can strip and remove significant amounts of your dye. Also, you should make sure that your scalp has not been wet within the last 48 hours to avoid any scalp irritation. If you are using a permanent dye system, you probably want to extend that to about 72 hours. After your dye is processed and your hair is styled and complete, you need to avoid washing it for at least one week. I have type 3A hair with medium porosity and my natural color is a medium brown with some natural highlights, especially on the ends as it grows out. All of these factors combined allow me to achieve the vibrant color without permanent dye or bleach. I touch up my color approximately every 10 weeks. I did not experience any change in curl pattern, no shedding, no breakage after using this color system. I attribute this to the fact that my hair was healthy before color processing. Hair dye is not a one size fit all process. No two people will get the exact same results because everyone's hair is different. Using what you see others use or guessing when you're not 100% sure can be a costly, damaging, irreversible mistake. This is not meant to discourage you from ever dyeing your hair, but to arm you with the information you need to make a wise, conscious decision. It is always my recommendation that you consult a professional colorist or stylist in your area before making any decisions about chemically altering your hair. Consultations are usually free and they don't require booking a service up front. There is no harm in visiting more than one salon to compare recommendations. After about 10 minutes, all of the sections are covered. Now I am going to sit under my hooded dryer to complete processing for an additional 30 minutes. This will ensure that the dye is evenly processing and that all of the pigment is deposited. Do not cover with any plastic during this time as you want your hair to be exposed. After you've finished processing, use cool water to thoroughly rinse the dye out until the water is running nearly clear. Then, you'll want to shampoo your hair a couple of times with a sulfate-free shampoo or use the color treated hair formula for the color system that you are using. Now I am going to apply Ion's Color Defense After Color Sealer to protect and prolong the hair color. Your hair has a natural level of acidity known as your pH balance that works to keep your hair protected from things like fungi and bacteria and to protect your hair shaft. Whenever you do anything with chemicals like hair dye, you throw that pH balance off. Using a color sealer is going to restore your pH balance and make your hair shiny and manageable as well as protect your color. It is a good idea to use your color sealer for the next two or three washes after a new dye application. This will keep your color vibrant longer. I'm going to let this set for about five minutes and then rinse with cool water. After, I'm going to deep condition with my Trader Joe's conditioner. From here, you can just style as usual. I am going to do a wash and go. At monoshair.com slash hair dye basics, you will find a full explanation of how hair dye works and a list of questions you can take with you on a stylist consultation.